first of all, I want for you to know that PWM is a digital signal and not an analog one. As we can see, in our first graph, we have on Y axis 0 to 12 volts, but no voltage is applied to our hypothetical circuit. So, no current is flowing and we have no power on it. So, 0% is our total power that we com comes out, out of our circuit. In our second graph, we see that we apply the full voltage on our circuit. So that means that we have a 100% duty cycle. The maximum current is flowing through our circuit. So we're gonna explain how PWM works at delivering not the 100%, neither the 0% in our circuit. It uses pulses in order to get the average current flowing in our circuit as we want so. In our third graph, we can see that we apply 6 volts to our circuit. We can see that uh, we apply pulses that are the half time of uh, the graph open and the half time closed. So we apply 6 or 0 volts to our circuit. Which means if we count the average, we have a 50% duty cycle. So the current that is flowing to our circuit is 50% of our maximum current. Moving on to our fourth graph, we can, can see where pulse width modulation is mostly used. First of all, I want for you to understand that if we use 25% or 30% of our duty cycle, we use that amount of current flowing to our circuit, so we can precisely control what amount of current we are using inside our circuit. So that is perfect for applications such as DC motors, LED strips that use most of the times RGB LEDs, and third, light dimming. For example, uh, lights that are in stadium maybe use uh, PWM signals in order to get control. So the most frequently asked question is why not use resistors? Pulse width modulation is better to use in high load, such as motors or LED strips, instead of using resistors or voltage dividers, because they will consume more energy than it will produce heat. In conclusion, loss of power. So, we prefer to use pulse width modulation signal rather than using voltage dividers, which will not be so uh, good for our circuit. We lose power, which is not good. In this graph, we can see a print screen of uh, my oscilloscope uh, using PWM signal counting in order to count the PWM signal in our RGB LED. You can see that uh, the period is 2 milliseconds and the frequency is 490 Hz. Uh, our uh, duty cycle here that we have uh, stopped in our oscilloscope is 65 around 65 percent so you can see that most of the time our secret is on and uh, about 25 percent is off so if you want to see how much current is flowing through our circuit you can uh, get average value of the area of the blocks in the pwm signal in the following video we're going to see an RGB LED driven by PWM signals by an Arduino and we will count with our oscilloscope the three channels of red, green and blue and uh, in this example I will demonstrate you with a print screen of my oscilloscope too so you can see how the LEDs are changing the colors with PWM signal as I demonstrated you before in conclusion you can easily see that we can control LEDs for example, very easily by using pulse width modulation. So, you can easily apply this to your circuits and get the maximum duty cycle that you want. Have precision and not use resistors in order to get lost by heat and things like that. Thank you very much guys for watching. Feel free to subscribe and like the video. Stay tuned!